All right, finally. Well, I think that looks pretty good. I have it mounted on my vacuum chuck. I'm sure you can hear it running in the background. I'm going to turn this on at 250 RPM, bring my tailstock up with the live center, let it find its own center in there. All right, now that it's secure, I could, if I wanted to, just turn off the vacuum pump and let it sit here for a while, but I want to get my smock on, get my gouge ready, and true up the face of this. So I will only go in as far as where the live center is at first and let it stay there as long as I can for support. This is quite heavy. So it's a lot to ask of the vacuum to hold this in place. I'll get ready and I'll start turning this. I'll be turning it at probably 750 RPM. Everything coming off of here was very sharp, so I thought it might be a good idea to wear a glove. All right, it's time to see if this vacuum chuck will hold up when I remove this knob. I'm turning at 1000 RPM and I'm taking very light cuts because it's a long way from here to where the vacuum chuck is holding. Well, that almost made me say heck darn right out loud. Well, when it came off of there, it tore up the craft foam that's on here. Or perhaps it came off because this was torn and leaking. In either case, I'll replace this, clean this up, and I'll be back. I've been using this Elmer's spray adhesive to put this craft foam onto the plumbing adapters. And it says here, do not use for bonding heavy materials. <laughs> okay, I didn't notice that before, but this is definitely heavy material. So I'm going to bring this cone up on my live center to hold this. And I'm just going to make this round and put a tenon down to this size on this end. So I'll get everything in place and be right back.
Now you may be wondering, why didn't I just put this between centers? Well, it's simply because I had the vacuum chuck set up from my previous work, and I just thought I would show it once again another way to prepare this. Working between centers would actually be easier than going through all the work of setting up the, the vacuum chamber. And of course also, it would not have fallen off like it did. But this does work, and sometimes I just like to experiment with different things. So now I'm going to turn off that vacuum pump and take this off of the vacuum chuck as soon as the pressure drops down far enough. Then I'm going to put it on its chuck and reverse it. All right, I'll be right back. This is just a matter of impatience. I think maybe I can take it off a little faster with the bowl gouge. I just want to try a little test of shear cutting here, see if I can clean that up. Still at 1500 RPM. I want this a little smaller in here. little jagged around the edge here. I want to just clean that up a bit and see how thin I can make this. Don't want to lose all the thickness, but it's either that or I have to make it a lot smaller. The neck measures two and seven eighths of an inch using these dividers. I'm going to drill with a two and three eighths inch Forstner bit.
quarter. All right, the bottom should be one half inch thick, which is plenty. I don't want it to be too thin. I'll try to make the walls a little thinner. Well, you're obviously not going to see too well what I'm doing in there. So I will finish this and I'll be back. I sanded it up to 400 grit and now I have just used Axe Abrasive Paste and Polish Restoring Paste to put a shine on this. I am real happy with this. All right, I'm fairly pleased with this. I think it came out all right. My wife's not crazy about it because she said she doesn't like the fact that it has all these straight edges, but this was put in at random and I'm pleased with it. So I guess I can't always make her happy with what I turn. Now I had one problem. I don't have one of those big hollowing rakes and to get down to the bottom with the easy wood tools I was using, they just chattered too much. So I'm afraid I didn't do a great job from about here down. And my fingers can only reach down to about there to do the sanding anyway. However, I did come up with a way to disguise the fact that that's not done very well on the inside. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you might already know what I did to disguise that. It's very simple, very simple, tasty way of doing it. I just filled it with Smarties. <laughs> and hey, if I happen to need a little bit of a snack, it's always ready to go. <laughs> so 
feel free to use that technique if you want. Only a fellow wood turner is going to look in there and go, hmm, I wonder just why it's like that. Well, I want to thank you for showing up today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you stuck with me all the way to this point, I really appreciate that. So, if you did enjoy this, number of things you could do to help me out, help my channel, right there. You can share this with others, click the like button, leave a comment. I really appreciate reading your comments. And subscribe if you haven't done that. Again, a big shout out and thank you to those who have subscribed in the past. Now, I hope you'll come back for the next project. Between now and then, have a great day in your shop, and please be safe. Take care now. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.